Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Robert Anthony. Grab a cup of coffee, your favorite sweetener, and sit down. It's time for a new video. You are going to see two or three, maybe one, I'm not really sure, epic, wonderful panoramic shots of the sunrise over the Orlando City skyline with Lake Eola in the foreground. I can't wait to show those to you. My sister and her husband, they uh, curate honey. They uh, have a flock of bees. I, I'm kidding, I know that it's not a flock of bees. I never know how much honey to put in. Hey sis, does that look good? I don't know. I love putting it in my coffee. Hey, so today I wanna to talk to you a little bit about uh, diligence. Diligence seems to be didn't come all off the spoon. Now it's off the spoon. Ah. Oh yeah. Diligence seems to be the word of the day. And I thought that would be great. And I'll explain to you what I mean. Went to a men's meeting this morning. Diligence was the topic. Went to um, a business meeting, a leads meeting today here in, uh, in Kissimmee and uh, discipline and uh, I guess in a roundabout way, diligence was the word of the day. And I thought, you know, there must be a message here that uh, I want to actually share with you. Um, it's interesting because our uh, content on the YouTube channel has altered just a little bit. It was my main demographic was in the 50 to 65 range. And it's kind of dropped down where like 65, 70% of the audience or the new audience is in the 30 to 45 range. So listen, I want to say, first of all, a huge welcome to those of you that have subscribed in the last few weeks. Um, I really appreciate the fact that you have chosen to subscribe to this channel. I hope that you enjoy the content and I hope that you learn something. And most importantly, I hope that you're encouraged and inspired because ultimately my goal as a human being is really to provide you with some level of encouragement and maybe some enthusiasm toward life and doing what it is that you are passionate about and doing what it is that you love. But I want to talk to you just a little bit about diligence and why this matters. First, let me get out my dictionary and give you the definition as Webster's 1880 version calls diligence. Diligence is, here it comes, a steady application in business of any kind, constant effort to accomplish what is undertaken, exertion of body or mind without unnecessary delay or sloth, due attention, industry, and assiduity. I love this little quote, diligence is the philosopher's stone that turns everything to gold. If you're going to be a successful photographer, if you're going to be a successful landscape photographer, a portrait photographer, whatever it is that you're choosing to photograph, you must possess diligence, discipline as well, just a dogged persistence to never give up. Let me explain to you how this is applied in my situation over the last, I would say, what? Two months. So things have changed at my flower shop. Not going to be able to travel this year and get out there and get the content that I love getting to share with all of you. But I've decided I'm going to, as I've said in so many other videos, make the best of the situation that we have at hand. And that would mean what I'm going to do is I am going to take advantage of the surroundings here that I have and do some photography. Well, I asked around and what are some great places to photograph and at the top of that list is always the Lake Eola area in Orlando. So for about four weeks I decided I was going to go down there and damn it I was going to get the sunrise over the Orlando city skyline and Lake Eola. Now the sun rises in the east and that means that it would be behind me when shooting the sunrise. Now, that's the ideal situation. You may be saying to yourself, I've always thought that you shoot into the sun, shoot the direction of the sun. Absolutely not, as it relates specifically to sunrise, and here's why. When the sun starts to get toward the top of the horizon or close to the line, it washes out the sky, makes it a washed out photo, and that's a problem. You don't really want that. So ideally, with almost all sunrise photography, you want 
your sun to be at your back. You want the sun at your back shooting away from the sun because what's going to happen is as the sun comes up, it's going to light up those clouds above the horizon starting in the east and working its way toward the west, ultimately coming over your head and lighting up the westerly horizon. And in the Lake Eolus scenario, Lake Eolus sits to the east of the skyline, meaning that if I'm at the far end of Lake Eola, it's going to shoot toward the skyline. The city skyline is going to reflect in Lake Eola with the sunrise lighting up the clouds above the city. So the goal was get down there, which is a 45 minute drive from my home, in time to be there about a half an hour before the sunrise, which meant many days of getting up at about four o'clock in the morning to head down there. Now this requires diligence because it's almost always guaranteed that it's not going to work out the way that you want it to. One of the things that I've shared with people in a couple of different meetings that I've spoken at and some speaking things that I've done is the fact that as a photographer, you can put the effort in, you can go to the hike, you can hike 4,000 feet up a mountain range and about 80% of the time you get up there, you really are hoping to nail the shot. And it's a fail. There's a lot of dogged persistence and diligence that it takes to pursue that perfect photograph. Not only are you having to hone your craft, and not only are you having to be in shape enough to be able to climb a lot of these vistas or get yourself to the areas where you want to photograph, you got to keep doing it over and over and over again. So one of the things that separates the... Uh, boys from the men, the girls from the women, as it relates to this, is you understand you have to keep at it. There's only going to be about a 25% chance that you're going to get a shot, one which you would want to hang on your wall. And that was the case here. It took me nearly two and a half weeks driving downtown Orlando to finally get the shot that I wanted. Lots of epic fails. Lots of fails. Now, I had a lot of fun hanging out down at the downtown area in the morning, um, you know, meeting with the homeless folks and talking to them. I'm always entertained when I get to kind of hang out with the homeless people and talk to them and listen to about how they need bus fare because they just got out of jail and they want to go see their aunt and uncle in Alabama. But be that as it may, I was still there for the sunrise. So this chasing sun evolved into... Uh, doing video and hyperlapses of the Orlando City area pre-dawn, in the morning. Um, and it was so much fun. That then produced my Orlando 4K at night video. I'll put a link to that right up here. Make sure you watch that after this if you haven't already seen it. It is unbelievable. I love the music. I love the footage. But just keep going. You got to just keep going. Just like in life, you got to just keep going. And that's what I did. And then there was a day, a fateful day, when I was down there, and it looked pretty good. There were clouds in the sky, and they were high. If you know, if you've watched my videos, in order for the sunrise to really be something that's going to be worthy of, photo of photography, those clouds have to be high. they got to be up there. they have to be way up there. Stratosphere. The horizon to the east was clear. That means there's no cloud cover down low. So that when the sun starts to come up, it impedes the ability of the rays to get up, bounce off the earth, and hit those clouds in the stratosphere. That was good news. And then third, it was calm, it was cool, relatively speaking, for Florida. And there was a lot of cloud cover to the west. High cloud cover to the west. And then it happened. I had the drone out, which you should do. I was ready, which you should be. And uh, I noticed to the east, and this is the way it works with the sunrise, and let me explain. I noticed to the east that subtle maroon, that deep, deep red, that deep, deep maroon started to make its way up from the horizon. Now, one of the things that most of you watching may already know, if you don't, you'll learn something new here. The best sun, sunrise and sunset photography happens before or after the sun actually is a, a below the horizon. So before the sun's above the horizon and after the sun's below the horizon at sunset, that's going to be when your best photography opportunities are going to happen. I can't tell you how many times I've been out and I've been photographing and everybody's photographing when the sun's going down. Sun goes down, everybody leaves. 
It's usually just me sitting there. It's funny because 15 minutes later is when the magic really starts to happen as far as the sunset goes. And as far as the sunrise goes, it's 15 to 20 minutes before that sun even gets to cresting the horizon. Word to the wise. So I looked and the telltale sign of the sunrise was coming. I could see the maroon low on the eastern horizon. And I just knew that with time, and this is what happens, as the sun continues to come up above the horizon, all the clouds start to light up and they were starting to light up over my head. The ones to the east get brighter and they keep lighting up and they keep lighting up and they keep lighting up. And then to the west, they start lighting up above the city of Orlando skyline over Lake Eola. Set up the drone. Drone was in place already, actually. Set it up and shot the panoramic system. See my other video on shooting panoramas to learn how to actually use the Mavic Air 2S to shoot panoramas. And I was able to achieve these shots. Let me show those to you right now. Now you can see the colors of the city, you can see the colors of the sky, and you can see how as it would go generally, that is a almost a perfectly exposed both on the foreground and in the sky. And that's achieved because there's not extremes in the light with the sun, because the sun's at our back, and it's actually lighting up from behind, which is absolutely what you want. It's an even light, just like this spot ring that I use to do these videos. It's an even light displayed over the subject. These are the shots that I was able to get. So the diligence, the continuing to go after it, and continuing to go after it, and continuing to go after it, produces something that is immortalized in time with the snap of a shutter. For always and forever, that particular unique sunrise is captured for me to put on the wall, for you to put on a wall, to share with other people, to ultimately show the beauty of the Lord's hand painting the sky. Never to the same, just like a snowflake. That's what diligence does for you. So whether that's with raising your children, pursuing your education, going after your fitness goals, it requires a dogged persistence, a diligence when things are a drag, when the skies are gray, when time seems to just be standing still, you got to keep going because you never know when you're going to get a shot like this. Keep climbing those mountains, keep walking those ridges, keep dragging your tent up to camp because you never know when you're going to get the shot of a lifetime. Always be prepared. Have your camera with you, have your drone with you, have everything in the ready. Make sure your batteries are always charged because you never ever know when that 10 minutes in time is gonna go favorably for you. Never know when you're going to meet the right person that's going to advance your career. You never know when you're going to be able to push that shutter because with a sunset and a sunrise, you have about eight to 10 minutes max to get the shot that you want. You got to be ready. You got to be diligent and you got to pursue. Hey, I hope this helps you as you evaluate what you're doing with your life. I hope this encourages you and inspires you because I love doing that for you. Listen, I'd love to have your comments in the comment section below. Certainly would love to have you as a subscriber. If you're not, if you just hit that subscribe button and click that bell notification when it comes up, and by all means, leave a like if you would, if I've earned it. I think that that would be great. Again, those of you that are new, I really appreciate you. I'm so glad that you felt that it was good enough for you to be a subscriber here. I hope you learned something. Let me know what you'd like to see in the comment section below. More than happy to try to make a video about it. Until the next time, I will see you in the next one. I'm Rob. I'm out.